In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this using mesh simplification or remeshing. Let's get straight into it. Welcome back to Makers Muse, guys. My name is Angus, and today we're going to look at how you can use remeshing algorithms to add detail and smoothness back into models that might not have already had it. So as a perfect example, here I have a death claw pulled from Fallout 4. And in, in games, model meshes have quite a low what's called polygon or triangle count because they need to be kept light and efficient. And then the game will add textures on top and use very sophisticated bump maps to kind of add that detail back in. But when you pull them out of the games, you end up with what's, what looks like this. If I press W to show the wireframe, you can see the triangles are very obvious. So if I 3D printed this, it would look like this. It would look low polygon, which is a look sometimes people like. But in my case, I want it to look smooth. And for some people, you might think, oh, I'll print it and then sand it or something like that. But you can actually add smoothness back into your models before you even commit them to a 3D printer or another purpose. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video today. So let's select the head within Mesh Mixer by just clicking around it like this. There we go. So I've got the head selected there. And we're going to go to Edit and remesh. Now I'm not going to pretend I understand all the different kinds of algorithms used in remeshing tools, but all I know is that they're very powerful, but do need a bit of tweaking to get them working right for your application. So for example, the default here is definitely not what we want. So let's go to perhaps, let's have a look at linear subdivision. Linear subdivision, if I press W, will be the most, it's the most common and simple kind of remeshing. It's simply subdividing the triangles. But why would you want to add more triangles without actually changing the geometry? Well, in my experience, Mesh Mixer actually likes to have more triangles to work with when doing Boolean operations. So if you're trying to mesh mix two things together with a Boolean union or a, a Boolean subtraction, for example, or intersection, adding more triangles might make that result a little bit better. But in our case, we actually want to change the geometry. So let's go through the other options maybe relative density let's try that so that's going to smooth out things a bit which actually looks pretty good but we're losing a lot of detail in the eyes there that's not really what we want what about adaptive density let's have a look at that there we go we've got a bit more detail back in the eyes and it's not perfect but when you print this it will certainly look a lot smoother than if you printed it as it was before as you can tell remeshing can be quite labor intensive on your computer so always keep that in mind that when you do a command, maybe just sit back and let it do its thing. So there we go, 45% density. That is a lot more triangles than we had before, but you can see it's tons smoother and that will print a lot smoother than it would have beforehand. But how did I achieve this model? If I press W, that's a ton of triangles compared to the original. And I actually use Mesh Lab to do this and my favorite remeshing algorithm. Let's jump over to Mesh Labs. So the thing to note about Mesh Labs is there's no undo. You can't go back if you want to change something, you have to just completely reload it. And it's very clunky to use. So I only use this software because it can import a lot of different mesh formats if I need to convert and because it's remeshing algorithms are second to none. So let me show you my favorite filter to add detail back into a model like this. It's called Butterfly Subdivision. So let's go to Filters and we want to go to remeshing, simplification, and reconstruction. Again, as I said, there is so many different kinds, so many different research projects and, and theses have gone into this, this software. I'm not going to pretend I understand them, but I do know what I'm after. Subdivision surfaces, butterfly subdivision. All right, so as I said, I only know how to use the tools to do what I want. I don't fully understand how they work, but there's different iterations, which I, as far as I understand, the more you give it, the more uh, resolved the, the mesh becomes, the more smoother it becomes. And then you have different units, percentages. So let's go with maybe five and 10, I guess. That didn't do much. What about one? That's more like it. Okay, so I went with the iterations of 10 and a threshold of one. And that seems to have done a pretty good job. So let's have a look at what the mesh actually looks like. And you can see it's, it's smooth over everything, but it's actually kept some of the sharp details. It's kept the tongue and it's kept all those, which is really quite 
in my opinion, really unbelievably powerful. <laughs> Can we go to less than 0.5? There. So that's that's added a unbelievable amount of triangles in. And that has turned this model into a ridiculously smooth model. Apply. So now I've got our model with all the extra detail added in. All you need to do to get it out of Mesh Lab is to go to File and then Export Mesh As. And obviously, if you're 3D printing it, choose STL and you're good to go. So the thing to keep in mind is the more triangles you add, the larger the file size. So in my second video in this series, I'm going to talk about mesh simplification or decimation, or in other words, getting a mesh that's very high triangle count and making it a little bit more manageable because sometimes when you're using 3D scanners specifically, you'll end up with meshes that are gigabytes in size. And obviously manipulating those is very difficult. The detail they have in the triangle density is not even reproducible on a 3D printer. So you might actually want to get those meshes and take some of the triangles out so you can work on them a little bit easier. So that's what I'm going to talk about in the second video in the series. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. He has placed satellites into orbit. 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 He has actually walked in space.